Bertram, when I want to think deeply about what it means to be human, I think of self-awareness. Many other things we can talk about. But when I think of self-awareness, the process of myself being aware of myself being aware, is the most fundamental thing I can imagine. As a social cognitive psychologist, how do you look at self-awareness and how can you dig into it? We have to first ask what the self is that you are aware of. And I think there have been many philosophical debates about the self. And one of those, of course, is that the self is an illusion. But when people show self-awareness, they are aware of their own mental states of a goal, a belief, a desire, maybe a twinge of doubt. They are also aware of bodily states. That's the, the basic awareness. Then we have reflection that we sometimes catch ourselves being aware of monitoring our own mental life. So then we are meta-aware. <laughs> now, from a social psychological perspective, we have to ask, what does this self-awareness do for social behavior, for social interactions? And one of the important functions of self-awareness is that it ties the other mind to your own mind. Why? Because if I understand the difference between a goal and a belief, between a belief about this and a belief about that, those distinctions are also available when I try to find out another person's mind. Mm. So by understanding our own minds, we actually also gain access to other minds because we are one of the best models for the other mind. So we can show that in developmental progression, growing self-awareness, not just of body, many animals have body awareness, but awareness of mental states goes in parallel to awareness and understanding of other people's mental mm. states. And of course, the learning goes both ways. As I learn from others that there are things like beliefs and emotions and fear, then those concepts are also available to explore my own mental life. And so you see that the complexity grows really in parallel. So is there a difference between having a belief and having a self-aware sense of that belief? Yes, a belief has a function to guide action. Okay. And there's a conscious awareness, and philosophers have done wonderful work on this, the conscious awareness of the content of the belief, that it's raining, that this is brown, that this is beautiful. But it's quite different if I'm conscious of my act, my state of believing. Yes. And we can also see this quite nicely in language, because when we describe other people's beliefs, we often use verbs like she thought, he thinks, he believes. When we describe our own beliefs, we just say it's blue, mm -hmm. it's red, because the I think is implied, but only implied because we deal with other people who understand that I have a mind. If you didn't have any idea that I expressed a belief, then I would have to say, I think it's raining rather than it is raining. So language reflects the understanding that sometimes the content is all we need to talk about. It's raining, we both see it, therefore I don't have to say anything else. But if I say, I think it's raining, but I don't really know, now I'm communicating something more complexly to you. Mm -hmm. And you can act on it in different ways. So does the process, though, uh, enhance our own self-awareness? Or is the self-awareness something that has always existed and, and, and uh, it, it sort of develops by itself? Self-awareness can be practiced. Uh, we all know people who are rarely self-aware. And you notice it because they act in more automatic ways and then you point out something to them. You point out to them that they constantly interrupt you and you realize suddenly awareness pops into the room, right? So self-awareness is distributed, more or less self-awareness. Clearly we know that some people who explore their own minds, introspective people, also find all kinds of not so pleasant things. So there's sometimes good reason why you don't want to be too self-aware. You are aware of your mortality, of your faults, of your flaws, of the imperfection that you have just performed in the la latest interaction with another person. So we see that self-awareness can vary from day to day, from person to person. We probably also can assume that self-awareness has varied over biological and cultural evolution. The more we are facing other people and objects of culture and the way we are challenged by other people to act in new ways, the more it challenges us to be self-aware, to say, what am I doing? What should I be doing? What does she mean by that? So 
I would actually venture the hypothesis that self-awareness has exploded in the last 10 or 12,000 years because culture has exploded. And thus the, mu the multiple triggers on our self-awareness and to get better at self-awareness has increased. But which way does the causation go? It would seem that you're saying that the culture has built the self-awareness, but isn't it more the opposite? That the self-awareness has created the culture and that human culture can be said to be highly dependent upon human self-awareness. It is now, but I think the original step was the discovery of being able to create things, to build houses, to build uh, cathedrals, to create art, and then reflect on that. We see this in children too. They first explore the world and then discover that they can move things, that they can touch their body, that they can control their body better and better. And out of those discoveries comes better and better self-awareness. It's not that the 12-month-old the has to first become self-aware before they can start doing interesting things with their body. It's the doing that becomes now the input to your perception that is the discovery. And so when you live in a community that has grown from 50 to 5,000, you are exposed to so many more things that are discoveries for you. Now become, you become aware of all the things in the world, and then you might discover and explore things yourself. And if 5,000 do this, you can imagine how quickly culture explodes in all its complexity. How unique are human beings in this sense of, uh, of, of self-awareness? Difficult question, because we have very few methods to find out about self-awareness that are not verbal. I can ask you and, and listen to you how you reflect on yourself. There are a few methods by which we can do it. We can use the dot test. You put a, a lipstick dot on an animal's forehead or a baby's forehead, and you put them in front of a mirror and see whether they try to move the dot in the mirror or on themselves. And you can show that developmentally, babies don't quite show it yet. Very soon they show it. Some animals show it. Primates do. Many monkeys don't. But that's just about it. Much more we can't really test very easily. We can show that they have body awareness, but reflecting on their own body, reflecting on their own mental states or actions, at least we have no evidence at this point.